Well, today's gospel reading, where Jesus famously says, I am the vine and you are the branches, is one of my all-time favorites. I love the, the symbol of the branches connected to the vine is a metaphor for our being connected to the divine. But before we get into that, I want to speak briefly for a moment about the first reading this morning. The reading from the Acts of the Apostles, which Sue read for us. This reading from the Acts of the Apostles only comes around in the lectionary once every few years, and most pastors rarely discuss it. But I think it's important, since we are an open and affirming church, that we talk for a moment about this reading and understand its meaning and its significance. Because something extraordinary happened in that reading, and maybe you didn't catch it, but the very first non-Jewish person to be baptized as a Christian was a black gay foreigner. This reading from the Acts of the Apostles is known as the story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. Now, we don't hear a lot about eunuchs today, do we? But we hear about them a lot in the Bible. In the ancient world, in Jesus' time, there were three genders, male, female, and eunuch. The word eunuch means guardian of the bed. The reason they were called that is because in royal households, in wealthy households, palaces, kings and wealthy men would assign eunuchs to guard the bedrooms of their wives and daughters because they knew eunuchs would be safe, because eunuchs were not attracted to women. Now, some wealthy men went a step further, just to be sure. They had their eunuchs castrated. And it is why Jesus, in Matthew 19, verse 12, says, there are eunuchs who are made that way by men, and there are eunuchs who were born that way. So the next time your conservative Christian family members and friends <laughs> start quoting the Old Testament to you about how homosexuality is a choice, you tell them what Jesus and Lady Gaga said. <laughs> We were born that way. <laughs> the Ethiopian eunuch today, a gender non-conforming person, would be part of the LGBTQ community. We hear in the story that even though he is a court officer to the queen of Ethiopia, he is forbidden by law to worship in the temple because of his race, because of his sexual nature, and because of his nationality. Sound familiar, right? Okay. Philip doesn't care. Philip baptizes the eunuch anyway. The early Christians, followers of the way of Jesus, they were saying, the old ways of thinking, the old ways of believing, all those old laws and rules about who's in and who's out, who's clean and who's unclean, who's worthy and who's not worthy, they don't matter anymore. And what those early Christians were doing was drawing the circle wide, just what we sang about this morning in our introit, 
Draw the circle wide. Draw it wider still. Christianity was never meant to be an exclusive club for special people. It was an inclusive way of life to include more and more people and to welcome all people to the table. I don't know how Christianity ended up being what it is today and why it has a reputation of being a place where people are excluded and judged. But I just wanted to take a moment to honor this story and to remind us that's how Christianity began. That's what Christianity is about. Okay, so let's get to this gospel story of the branches and the vines. The last time I talked about this gospel with you, I joked with you. And I said that if Jesus grew up in the neighborhood that I grew up in, in New York, an Italian-American neighborhood, I said if Jesus and the apostles were hanging out at the street corner in Brooklyn, Jesus might have sounded like this, saying today's gospel. Yo. <laughs> use. Use guys are the branches. And I am divine. And I like that because divine, I am divine. The divine is my favorite term for God. Like many of you, I sometimes struggle with the word God. The word God conjures up for me an old man with a long gray beard up in the clouds looking down on us and judging us. But I love divine. Divine's not a noun. It's not male or female. It means magnificent, awe-inspiring, amazingly good. <laughs> That's God. And if you break the word apart, divine, divine it, you Latin scholars know, of the vine. Divina. Divino. Now, I know that others of you know what vino means when you go to an Italian restaurant. Vino is wine, fruit of the vine. And wine was highly symbolic and important in the Jesus story. Jesus' very first miracle, the first miracle he ever did, was he turned water into wine. He took something ordinary, and transformed it into something extraordinary. And we know that his very last meal with his friends, he served them wine at the Last Supper. And he said to them that it represented his blood, the life force circulating through his being. Jesus was trying to tell the apostles and trying to tell us that that same life force that flows through his being flows in and through us. That same divine force. Now, I'm sure all of you have been to a vineyard and have seen a grapevine. It's all intertwined. It's all interconnected. It's why Jesus says, I am in God, you are in me, and I am in you. We're all one. And just as the nutrients of the vine come from the ground and the life-giving force goes through the main vine and into the branches, the power and the presence of God flows in and through each one of us. But we've got to stay connected to the vine. We've got to stay connected to the divine. It's why Jesus says in today's gospel message, just as a branch cannot bear fruit unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in God. To abide means to be one with. 
to dwell with, to remain with. So my question for you this morning is, are you abiding in God? Are you feeling the divine flow within you? Are you experiencing that rich, full life that Jesus promised? Are you experiencing love and peace and joy and abundance? Well, if you're not, maybe you've got a connection problem. And maybe you need to do what Jesus said in today's Gospel. Maybe you need to do some pruning. Some spiritual pruning. You know, when you prune a plant, you're getting rid of things that no longer serve the plant so that the nutrients, the life, can flow more easily and more quickly to the plant for its growth. So what do you need to prune in your life? What do you need to cut away so that you can experience more of this power and presence? Maybe you need to cut away worry. Maybe you need to prune away fear or resentment or lack or limitation or a sense of unworthiness. When we get rid of those things, we open ourselves up to receive more and more of the flow. And as we heard in our words of integration and guidance this morning, one of the best ways we can abide in God, stay connected to the vine, is through a daily spiritual practice. Staying connected to God throughout the day, through prayer, meditation, spiritual reading, through mindfulness practices, through gratitude, all of those things keep us connected to the vine. And we say, I am willing and ready to receive more and more of my good. I am open and ready to receive more and more of my God. So that's what I invite you to do on this fifth week of the Easter season, this time of resurrection and new life. I invite you to find time each and every day, throughout the day, to remind yourself to abide in God, to stay connected, and to allow yourselves to experience more fully the flow of the divine, the power and the presence of God in you and through you. Now,